Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now and Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you are always resist the proud who confine in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their honest boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of James. My brothers and, brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not murder. For now if you do not commit adultery but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have, no, you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill. And yet, you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So, faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Psalm 146, we will read responsibly by, by line. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my meaning. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of the earth. For there is no life in them. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth. And in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. Whose hope is in the Lord their God who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who gives justice to those who are oppressed, the Lord sets the prisoner free. The Lord 
The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord shall reign forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know that he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the little children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. And then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. And they brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. And then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epaphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So one of my best friends in seminary loves to call this gospel text the Snickers commercial of all of the gospel texts. He thinks that after Jesus' response to the Syrophoenician woman, he suggests that if Jesus had just been given the Snickers, he might not have responded so harshly. I can only... Picture now Super Bowl 2022, a Snickers commercial with Jesus' disciples surrounding him after he responds to that poor woman, and they say, Jesus, grab a Snickers, you turn into the devil when you're hungry. It's a perfect illustration for this text. We have a tired, weary Jesus who, as the bishop commented on her lectionary reflection this week, said that he's fatigued from ushering in the kingdom of God. It's hard work to do what God is asking Jesus to do. I can only imagine for myself what Jesus must be feeling like at this point in the narrative. He's been fighting with the religious authorities at every single turn. He's traveled a long, long way from home, and he's been performing miracles and doing the works of God left and right. What is more is his own followers. They still have no clue who he is. They don't understand why he's doing all of these things. And then onto the scene comes this Syrophoenician woman, a Greek, a a Gentile woman who, according to some scholars, was not even supposed to approach a Jewish man, let alone speak to one, but she does it anyway. And she does, and when she does, rather, she literally changes Jesus' world. She flips his mind upside down because she understands even more fully than Jesus' own followers what his mission is to be. Perhaps she even understands more than Jesus himself what he's called to do. I can only imagine why Jesus must be grumpy at this point. 
He really just wanted to get into that house to have a break, and then this woman approaches him out of nowhere. If only he had that Snickers to grab hold of. But he didn't. He wasn't given that Snickers bar, and I'd like to think that's exactly what makes this text, this story, that much more powerful. Of course, Jesus couldn't have really received the Snickers bar in biblical times, but even if he got that much-needed rest that he was trying to seek before he encountered this woman, I'm not sure that we would have been given that response that we actually needed to hear as opposed to the comfortable, cozy response that we've all expected Jesus to give. In other words, because of that harsh and, yes, paternalistic response from Jesus to the Syrophoenician woman, what we have been given is a gift by the very rebuttal of that woman, the very one who in the eyes of many, including Jesus, at least in this text, was less than. I can picture now the persistence of a mother caring for her ill child, She's just heard of the one who has the power to heal, the one who has the power to bring health and restoration, the one who has the ability to change her life and the life of her daughter for the better. And when she sees this man from Nazareth, she's going to go and ask him for healing, and she's not going to take no for an answer. That ain't good enough, Jesus. I can hear her saying to that tired and weary man, Even the dogs under the table, they get to eat the crumbs from the children. In other words, Jesus, you've just fed 5,000 people. I know there's something left for me as well. I might not be a Jewish person, but I am a child of God, and I deserve what you've been giving to them just the same. I'm not asking for all the lot of the loaves and the fishes, just a few leftovers. I know you've got them. I know you can make more. We need healing, too, right here, right now. I know you're tired, but you don't need to wait. And he didn't wait. Jesus didn't wait, which highlights just how powerful that woman's response was. Instead of going about his business and ignoring what she had to say, he healed the woman's daughter right then and there. And what is more, he did it from a distance, which is a very first in this gospel text. Because of the faith and the persistence and perhaps a bit of that mama bear spirit as well, the Syrophoenician woman literally changed the course, the outlook, the vision of Jesus' entire ministry. It's as if the woman's response was in and of itself that Snickers bar moment for in an instance we see a tired, weary human side of Jesus be filled with a divine power and a divine spirit that we all know is really there. We see how the response of this woman allows for Jesus to realize the full potential of his own ministry. And what is more, this this text highlights for us that God's plan is always to give life, always to have compassion, always to have mercy. Because what we see in this text is God not only working through Jesus, but through that Syrophoenician woman as well. What God is reminding Jesus of through that woman is that his mission is to be one that is filled with infinite compassion, infinite love, infinite grace, and infinite mercy. And because of that reminder by God, I think we might do well to remember those things ourselves. Last week we began talking about the mission of the church. That is, to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. This week, we must remember that as we go about doing that work to fulfill that mission, we must always do it with that same compassion and love and mercy and grace. Regardless of how tired and weary we might be on our own journey, regardless of who it is that comes asking for that healing, that restoration, We need to give them all of those things that God is asking us to give. New Testament scholar Mitzi Minor writes that Mark gives us God's initiatives in these stories for the gospel today. 
Jesus' actions illustrate that a worthless Gentile girl whose mind was devoured by a demon and a good-for-nothing deaf man who, could, who couldn't speak clearly were indeed children of God to be embraced and valued. She goes on to say that humans, or humanity's authentic response to God's initiative calls forth the recognition that there are no external barriers between God and human beings, not race, not class, not ethnicity, gender, age, or physical condition. Consequently, she says, there should also be no such barriers between human beings. That's what the Syrophoenician woman, that's what God is helping Jesus to be reminded of as he goes about doing his work with his tired, weary soul. Had Jesus been given that Snickers bar, I'm not so sure that we would have been given that response for us to reflect on this morning. Something that is as crucial for us today as it was in Jesus' own time. That last little line in our reading from James this morning reads, So faith by itself, if it has no works, it is dead. So faith by itself, if it has no works, it is dead. It's something that holds true to our very beings, especially in our current cultural context. And while that little statement is true and is dear to our hearts, it's also worth remembering, my friends, that the opposite of that statement is not true, and it's a dangerous way of being for us who profess the Christian faith. In other words, what I am suggesting is that one can do works without having the faith. And it's dangerous because it suggests to the world that if we have that mindset ourselves, that our faith that what we believe, that why we come to church each and every week, none of that matters. All of what we've been learning and reflecting on in this gospel text this morning, I hope will allow you to see otherwise, to have a different perspective, to share with others just exactly why faith and works are a necessary pairing, why one can't happen without the other for if it weren't for the faith of a mother caring for the well-being of her ill child, if it weren't for the faith of someone who knew of the good works in that man from Nazareth, I'm not sure that her child would have ever been healed. I'm not sure that we would have ever been healed. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand and say with me the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with the Holy Spirit, let us offer prayers to God for the needs, concerns, and hopes of the whole human family, saying, Hear our prayer. For the Church, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, and for the members of the Anglican Communion, especially the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan, that in the powers of the Spirit, we may join with God's people from all corners of the earth to give witness and praise to God with one voice. God of love and mercy, for our partners in outreach and mission, especially for Holy Cross Primary School in Belize, whom we are supporting this month with our Thanksgiving basket. God of love and mercy, for this parish family and for our visitors and newcomers, that we may drink deeply of the living water of God's spirit and be signs of God's love, joy, and peace. We give thanks for all our visitors, for the volunteers who helped to dem demolition the old playground equipment in our play yard, and for Grace Day School beginning its 65 fifth year of classes. God of love and mercy. For those who serve in public office, Joseph, our president, Ralph, our governor, for the Congress and the courts, that the leaders of this land and of every land may serve and with hearts turned toward justice, freedom, and peace for all of God's people. God of love and mercy. For those whose lives are marked by violence, that they may be comforted and brought to safety and that God will break the hatred in human hearts and end violence and establish a season of peace in areas of conflict. God of love and mercy, for all who serve our country, that they may serve with integrity, justice, to protect the freedoms we enjoy. God of love and mercy, for the sick, the lonely, the destitute, and the hopeless, and all those who commend themselves to our prayer, that they may be comforted and strengthened by God's life-giving spirit. We pray especially for Bruce Fisher, Jerry Heil, Ryan Henry, Danny Hightree, Carl Hansen and family, Foster Ryan, those suffering from natural disaster, and for those whose needs are known to God alone. God of love and mercy. For those who have died, that they may find rest and peace in God's presence forever. God of love and mercy. Almighty God, and a, Almighty God and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. I invite you to stand as you are able. My sisters, my brothers, my friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. So wonderful to see you all here in church this morning on this beautiful Sunday. Thank you for spending your time with us this morning. Just a couple of announcements, uh, first of which our vestry person of the day is Jerry Twig. Jerry's in the back there in the pink shirt. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, complaints, pastoral needs, anything that needs uh, my attention or the church's attention, please let Jerry or myself know after the service, and we will be sure to address them in the best way that we can. Um, One important announcement for next Sunday, uh, we are only having one church service at 1015 for our welcome back and kickoff to the program year. So If you show up at 8, then you'll have to help us set up because there won't be a service in here. But anyway, it's bring your own chair. I think we've got a jazz trio coming to help play some of our music. Uh, Thanks to Suzanne and her wonderful connections. And uh, we'll also be doing a blessing down at the Riverview House as part of the service. And I think there'll be a few treats afterwards for all of us to enjoy. So I hope you all come out um, and celebrate together. The reason we're just having one service that day is because I know that there's uh, some of our families and friends out there who aren't comfortable being indoors at all yet, and we just kind of wanted to do one kickoff service where we could all feel comfortable being together. So uh, I hope you all come come and enjoy that. I think it's going to be a wonderful day. Pray that the weather will be as nice as it is today. Um, One other thing, the office is going to be closed tomorrow in honor of a Labor Day, and I hope that you'll check out Friday, Graham. Uh, Carlton, our former rector, he wrote a very lovely thank you note in in the Friday, Graham, thanking all of Grace for the many, many well wishes and cards that were sent to him um, after his mother had passed away. So please do check that out. And Our Words of Grace, our quarterly newsletter, is out now. You should have received an email. Uh, Jim's got copies back there for you after the service. If you prefer a print copy, uh, there's printed copies of Friday Graham back there as well. So um, just grab one on your way out. And now let's move on to our Thanksgiving basket. Uh, There was a typo in the prayers. It's actually going to rise against hunger this month, uh, which... We've supported uh, for quite some time now, and on October 17th, we will actually be doing our Rise Against uh, Packathon right here in the church. So I hope you all will come out for that. That is what uh, the donations are going to this month to help support that ministry. So um, one new thing with the Thanksgiving basket, we've got a little microphone attached to the basket so our folks online can hear. Um, so just make sure you speak up. Uh, you don't have to hold it way up here. Just, you know, speak, speak nice and loud. I will kick it off. Patty Harris is thankful that her 101-year-old aunt in Baton Rouge in, is just fine in her senior citizen home. So um, that's amazing. Thank you for submitting that, Patty. Those of you who are online, you can always submit thanks, and we will read them out loud. So who wants to kick us off from the congregation? Linda. I am thankful for my granddaughter's fifth birthday. I'm thankful for school starting. Praise God. 
I'm thankful for the many family birthdays in September. I think there might be eight or nine of them in my family in wow. September. So I'm thankful for all those people. Very good. That's a lot of birthday cards. That's a lot of cards. <laughs> I'm thankful for making beautiful memories with family from out of town. I uh, have two quick thank thankfulness. Thank yeah, thanks to think for be thankful for. I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all the drinking we did over the holidays. Oh. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, I told you guys that my daughter was putting together a little family trip and we ended up going to Myrtle Beach. Okay, all right. One of the requirements was everybody had to have their vaccination. And lo and behold, we had some family members that did not. The reason I wanted them to have a vaccination is because my wife has a lung condition and I can't afford to take a chance on her catching the virus, all right? So we had some members that didn't show. Shame on them. We had a ball. <laughs> uh, my oldest daughter used to be a bartender, and we had drinks that first night. <laughs> and lo and behold, my youngest wanted to have the strongest drink in the world, Long Island iced tea, to share with me. <sighs> it was beautiful the whole week. We ended up staying in Merle's Inlet, which is about 20 minutes away from Myrtle Beach, right? Lo and behold, I'm sorry, it's 99.9% white right so a black family showing up for the first time on an airbnb right that you're scared to rent it was beautiful they treated us very nicely we had golf carts free you know hey the, the lady that had the place let us stay an extra day free because i gave her some advice on taking care of it lo and behold i need to tell you we went to myrtle beach 99.9% .9 of the people there were not wearing masks, yeah. all right? We were the only crazy people wearing masks in a 95 degree weather, mm. all right? And I bring this up for one good reason. We have friends at work, I have a friend at work whose mother-in-law and father-in-law passed away the week before we left. They had their vaccine. Mm. They had, they uh, caught the virus from members of the church. 28 members of their congregation got the virus during that weekend. And his mother-in-law passed away. Mm. Father and mother-in-law both were on ventilators. He came through, but she didn't. For all of you here, whether you want to get the shot or not, do what is necessary to take the precautions to protect yourself and your loved ones, because we love to see you. Mm. That's what I want to get. I am thankful that we were able to attend my sister's beautiful wedding in New York last weekend. Oh, thanks for the rise against hunger. Oh, thanks for a great sermon and for a beautiful day today. Thirtieth mm. birthday on the night. And as always, I am thankful for all your love and your service to this place we call Grace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood for the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling His death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, the holy things for the holy one.
I invite you to stand or kneel and pray with me our post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, remember that life is short and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who traveled away with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us sing out, my friends.
rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.